Welcome to another presentation about the Carolina Bays. Today we will examine the mechanics and the timing involved in the creation of overlapping bays with emphasis on the role of soil liquefaction and viscous relaxation. This LiDAR image from Sintos.org shows a large cluster of overlapping Carolina bays that are located about 6 kilometers northeast of Maxton, North Carolina, between the Lumber River and the Gum Swamp. There are some Aeolian sand sheets to the east of the Lumber River. Some sand sheets overlay the bays and some bays overlay the sand sheets. This indicates that there were strong winds associated with the creation of the Carolina Bays. The image shows a large distortion at the point where the large basin contacts a smaller basin. The glacier ice impact hypothesis proposes that the Carolina Bays were formed from secondary impacts of glacier ice ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. The debris ejected from an impact crater follows ballistic trajectories from its launch position within the crater. When the crater is excavated, the innermost ejecta are launched first and travel fastest, following the steepest trajectories. Ejecta originating farther from the center are launched later and move more slowly, following near the crater rim. The debris from an impact forms an ejecta curtain in the shape of an inverted cone that sweeps outward across the target. Projectiles launched in ballistic trajectories at different angles, but in the same direction and at the same distance, will produce overlapping craters. The sequence of impacts can be deduced from the geological law of superposition, which states that younger stratigraphic layers are deposited on top of older layers. The flight time of the ice boulders that made the Carolina base was about 6 to 9 minutes. The numbers in this image represent the approximate sequence in which these overlapping Carolina bays were made. A basin that overlays another one was made later in time. The first three basins do not overlap each other, so it is not possible to determine the relative sequence of formation. Basin number four overlaps the three small basins, so it must have been created later. Basin number five clipped the rim of basin number four. This is how we know that basin five was formed after basin four. Basin number six overlaid basins three, four, and five. Basin number seven overlaid the part of basin six. Finally, the small basin number 8 clipped the rim of basin 7. All these impacts occurred within a few seconds of each other. From the ballistic equations and the distances involved, we can calculate that the secondary impacts happened from 6 to 9 minutes after the extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet by the Great Lakes. The LiDAR image shows the distorted rim where the liquefied soil flowed from the large basin into the cavity of the adjacent basin that had formed a few seconds earlier. The structure looks similar to what happens when a dam breaks. Assuming that the ice boulders that made these basins originated around Lake Michigan, the ballistic calculations show that the time of flight of the projectile that made the small basin was 413 seconds, which is 8 seconds before a larger projectile made the overlapping basin. This small time difference explains why the liquefied soil flowed from the large basin into the smaller basin. The cavity of the smaller basin had not become completely leveled by viscous relaxation before the large basin formed, so the soil flowed from the large basin into the cavity of the smaller basin. This slide illustrates soil liquefaction and viscous relaxation. Seismic vibrations exceeding magnitude 6 can liquefy saturated soil. The soil flows like a liquid and viscous relaxation reduces the depth of the impact cavities while restoring the stratigraphy. The kinetic energy for the creation of the small basin was equivalent to 18.9 megatons of TNT, and the impact that made the larger basin had a kinetic energy equivalent to 46.6 megatons of TNT. These were truly colossal impacts. Neither animals nor humans could have survived the barrage of impacts that made this landscape. The large basin has a length of 2,038 meters. The smaller adjacent basin has a length of 1,504 meters. Both of these bays are elliptical, but the azimuth vary slightly. One possibility for the difference in the angles is that no points could be selected in the portion of the rim that was destroyed by the overlap. Another possibility is that the projectiles that made the basins came from different locations of the ejecta curtain. Thank you for joining me in the study of the Carolina Bays. The Carolina Bays should not be neglected. Ask your geology professors to discuss the Carolina Bays because they are the most prevalent geological structures in the Atlantic coastal plain. There's a link to the LiDAR visualization tool in the description of the video. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. 
subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays and other scientific topics.